YouTube, what's up? Welcome to the vlog. Check the fit though. New Balance, I think 992s. Good company socks. Some old vintage like Nike shorts. Good company wash tee. And then the secret hat is coming very soon. So we're doing full day eating. Second day of the cut. It's getting serious and I want to involve y'all. But it's 11 and we started the video because I don't eat before 11. Um, I'll wake up, slam some creatine. Um, just kind of get it in my system so I don't forget. And then I go straight to the, the laptop, straight to the computer. I bang out all that work, chill for normally 15 minutes, get ready, and now we're off to the gym. This episode, we're gonna be talking about kind of uh, how to gauge, assess where you're at, where you wanna go, make realistic goals along with that. Um, and obviously so much of that, it depends on your, your craft, um, whether you wanna be a bodybuilder, a powerlifter. All that will depend on how we assess ourselves and how we stay um, up to date with our progress. All this is like running a self experiment on you, You're running on yourself. So you gotta understand and start to uh, control different variables while we measure progress. If you are a bodybuilder, maybe you have a coach and you're sending them pictures and they're assessing your physique. Uh, maybe you do a DEXA scan or another uh, form of body fat assessment. Um, if you're a weight class powerlifting athlete or a weightlifting athlete, maybe you don't give a flying F about anything besides your weight. And for me, it's not that serious, mostly the scale, because I know around 193 is what I hit last year. Um, and that was my leanest I've probably ever been, at least as an adult, not like a, a high school or college basketball player. And so I wanna beat that. So for sure, getting to 193 now, I'll tie it, if not beat it, because I have more muscle, I think now. I had a, a better year of training. Remember last time when I cut, I was only on a couple months of training just from COVID and building the gym and a little bit of mental health stuff that I took a year off training for the first time in my freaking life. You know, I'm over a year in, I got muscle, maybe some of the most muscle I've ever had in my life. So getting to 193 to 190, um, I'll for sure beat it by the scale and I know I'll beat it by the looks. Um, we're gonna head to the gym. It's a push day. I haven't eaten yet. Normally I eat when I just get to the gym. This is like the number one pro of being a gym owner. I just go eat all the snacks we sell. So I'm gonna go to protein bar. It's kind of my normal go-to. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Um, and I ride my bike. So hop in the whip with me. Not sponsored, probably should be the best protein bar in the game is Bear Bell. Not only by stats, so now eight fat, which is a hair high, 18 uh, carb, 20 protein, but by taste, this stuff is insane. I like this peanut butter one, or salty peanut, and caramel cashew, bang, both those. Um, so this come my pre-workout. I'm gonna slam some caffeine, the whole squad's here, um, and we'll get her done. So a little push day, it's 11.30. This is the first calories of the day. I'm probably sitting at 16, 1700 calories. I don't even really track anymore because I eat the same things every single day. So after this, I'll go home, I'll eat two of these fiber wraps, a pound of beef, super lean beef. Um, not patty, just grounded. So when it comes down to uh, actually getting your body fat, I think it's actually slightly overrated. Um, even if you're a pro bodybuilder, right, where body fat matters the most, how you look, um, your look conditioning matters even more than that number. It's kind of an arbitrary number. It's kind of like weight. Like the reason we're weighing ourselves every single morning is that you can see the progress of your calories because at the base bones of all of this, it's calories in out and then you're gonna lose weight or gain weight depending on that. Body fat percentage is like cool to know, but to be honest, like Ronnie Coleman might have never got his body fat tested and he's arguably the best bodybuilder of all time. So like there's not a lot going on there. Something like a DEXA scan a lot of universities have and now they're actually pretty common to get some at just like commercial places. If you Google like DEXA scan near you, you might be able to find one. I don't know the price. If it's worth you sticking to your goals and it's something that you can strive for, the dollar amount's probably worth it. It might be like a hundred bucks. If it's not something like me, it doesn't really motivate me that much to know that I went from 15% to 12% because I can just go by my looks and then maybe it's not worth it. Those are the options. I'll go DEXA or someone that's really good uh, with with uh, pinch or skin fold. Um, but other than that, I honestly think it's slightly overrated.
I have some like strength goals I like to hit under 200. I, got, I want to bench over four. Last time I did, I was like 208. So it'd be cool to do under 200. But there's like no reason for me to be. This is not muscle. Like I'm decently lean. Like I got baby abs at 210, but it's still just not healthy. Damn, I have no abs at 210. Yeah, but you're a baby. We'll get you there. Look out for Jerry, man. He's coming. You got a little bicep, a little forearm vein. Drink that water again. Oh, drink that water? Yeah. Look, look at that little vein. He's getting lean. Get in there. Mike's getting me there. Mike's getting me there. Slowly. It's kind of nice to ride here because like, I think being the owner of the gym and just everybody knows me, they like to talk. And so it's easier to talk while I'm riding this bike than while I'm lifting. So this like, like uh, in college when you have like open desk hours or something for your university teacher, I feel like this is it. Cause then like I'm not on my phone, I'm looking around, I'm talking. So people can come up and say what's up. Rather than when I'm lifting, I, I just don't really like to talk that much. I like to lift. I'll joke around, have a good time. Once the weights get heavy, man, I want to focus up. So it's a good like half an hour, 40 minutes. I'll just sit here and ride. And then we'll get real meal one of the day. So a couple of energy drinks, a lot of water and a protein. Bar is all we had and then see what we cook for lunch. It's about three o'clock, first big meal of the day. Um, one of the most underrated habits or tips, tricks, I think for anything, any productivity, business, um, relationships, definitely nutrition and lifting, is to set up a routine and stick to it. So I go to bed at the exact same time. I eat at the exact same time. Yeah, calories are all that matters and macros, technically for losing weight, but we have to build up these habits. I think about building the foundation to allow these things to progress. Like a lot of us know macros and a lot of us know, you know, about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. We know these rules, but just knowing those rules and applying those rules and sticking to them, the consistency is what actually matters. So how do we build the foundation, which I consider the habits and routine to allow ourselves to do that? Applying that and being consistent with it is what actually builds your muscles and makes you look good, right? Like. Having the knowledge is one thing, but doing it. So I think the habits are much more important. When you eat, eat at the exact same time every single day. That'll go so, so far in what you're trying to accomplish. So meal number one, a pound of 96% ground beef, about half a pound or two and a half servings of green beans, which is like 12 carb nothing. I'm gonna have a couple of these wraps. These are extreme wellness wraps. Oh shit, it's open from uh, almost just, almost just ruined the whole movie. Um, they're 15 carb fiber and like five protein. They're amazing. I wrapped my beef in that with that non-fat cheese I showed you, which is five protein, two carb, no fat. Um, and that's what my meal is almost every lunch until I get sick of it. And then I'll find something else with similar macronutrient breakdown to be my lunch then. See the finished product, uh, pound of ground beef, split up a couple ways. I throw it over the veggies with a slice of cheese to just a little bit more protein and make it a little tastier. Then I make these little crunch wrap, non-supreme, less supreme things. So these fiber wraps, beef, throw a little cheese in there and then I just sear each side, just kind of tighten it up like a little quesadilla. Um, and then I slam all these green beans first cause I'm a child and I gotta eat all the things I don't like first and then I go eat the yumminess. Even though I kind of like veggies, I don't love them. Obviously these little Supreme Wrap deals are the number one. So a little Diet Coke, we're chilling. You know, I'm on my break basically, it's three o'clock but uh, I bang all this out. All my workout uh, meetings, admin work, filming. We filmed the, the session obviously for the vlog um, and for other clips that we use in marketing. And then now I chill. So I breathe about an hour, maybe half an hour. I'm gonna slam this down um, and then back to the computer work. So a little bit of a breather, depending on the day. Sometimes I'm, I'm done. You know, if there's no more work to do, there's no more work to do. But we got a couple of launches coming. So good company, discord.com if you wanna get involved, 3sb.co. This hat may or may not be coming very soon. And if you wanna grab it before it sells out, good company, discord.com. Um, I'm gonna eat this, grab a meal, sit down with your boy. Enjoy it. Light a candle. Imagine what turn me on the big screen, light a candle, take a picture of it, send it on Instagram like we're having a nice romantic meal together. You and me. Cue the music. <laughs> 